Hey, everybody. Hey, -o. And Nick with his hey, oh. <laughs> yeah. Coming at you from out in the wilderness. Uh, today, we are we have a lot of things to show you and talk about, and we're going to make some bush coffee, or what is also sometimes called cowboy coffee or hobo coffee. And we're going to show you a couple of awesome knives that we got, and I'm going to talk about a couple of the bush pots for coffee, and then I brought a couple of machetes to talk about. So, <laughs> and we're going to show our knives and test our knives out, take a good look at them. And uh, so we're just, just generally going to have, have fun in the woods. <laughs> yeah. And uh, sound good to you? Yeah. All right. I Any... just wish I would have brought gloves. <laughs> it was cold out. And I did. <laughs> it is very cold out here. It was, I think it was like 29 degrees Fahrenheit when we left the house. And uh, I think it's in the 30s now, I think. But it's slowly warming up. It's supposed to get up into the 40s which it's not too bad if you're out here moving around. So let's uh, dig through our backpacks and take a look at what we have. All right. All right. So let me get this off. <clears throat> My pack has kind of the auxiliary stuff in it, extra stuff. Nick's pack has the bulk of what we're going to talk about today. So we have, let's just go ahead and get down to the nitty gritty of it. The star of the show, the knives. <laughs> Let me lay this down. I'm going to pull them out and show them to you. Now, everybody knows, everybody that has seen our videos knows that Nick and I love knives and machetes. And for the most part, we use what is readily available, which is production type knives. And so we've never really owned any custom made knives. And we changed that <laughs> for the better uh and i've looked and uh <clears throat> as the saying goes i searched high and low <laughs> and hunted for who i thought would make a good looking knife and when you look at the knife makers the knife makers wind up with certain styles oh. they wind up with certain styles and uh, there's a feller in San Diego, California, and his name, his company name is 73 Forge. And 73 Forge makes handmade knives. And the beauty of dealing with him is you get to choose your handle material, which is spectacular. And uh, I think the, the bulk of his knives I'm not 100% sure, but I think the bulk of them are 01 tool steel. And then there's a few other alloys that he uses. But anyway, here's mine. Comes in a leather sheath made by Hollis. H-O-L-L-I-S. Hollis Leather Works. And, or Leather Company or something. But this Hollis, not only do they make leather sheaths, but they make other leather products too, like wallets and uh, haversacks and pouches. And they even make leather pocketbooks for the ladies. <laughs> So now Nick doesn't have the ferro rod holder because Nick likes a giant ferro rod. His ferro rod. Yeah, is this a, jacket's got some big pockets. And that's for yeah. a reason. Look at this. Yeah, see the ferro rod. And Nick's ferro rod's about as big as his knife. So, <laughs> anyway, let's take a closer look at these. And then we're going to set up, set up some, some, uh, set up for making some coffee. But anyway, there's mine, and there's the handle material I chose. Look at that polish on there. Are you seeing that pretty good right there, Nick? Of course I can. I can see myself on that blade. Oh, can you? <laughs> really? Can you see the reflection of the camera? Just uh, about? If you angle it right, yeah. So anyway, that, blade. that one's mine, and I chose... He, he's, a, he's got a huge variety of handle materials, and you can just kind of choose whatever it is that you want. But mine's got a super, super, super fine polish on it. All right. So that one's mine. And I'm going to be using it some. But then this one's Nick's. Now, I think Nick's is a little bit thicker than mine. The actual knife itself is a lot thicker. And his is what's called a green curly maple. And how they do that process, I have no idea. But it's like a, it's a curly maple that's, I don't know, maybe it's forced pressure injected of some type with dye maybe I don't know because I never heard of a green maple and it's got some sort of a brown liner 
See, his is not necessarily as finely polished as mine is. Because Nick's going to use and abuse his knife. <laughs> Let me pull mine back out of here. I think right there you can see. I think you can see Nick's is just a little bit thicker than mine. Mm. Can you tell? Uh, I just guess. a little bit. I don't I think they're the same them. thickness. I should have measured them. But anyway. All right, so <clears throat> let's... Uh, Let's get to carving some stuff here. I'm going to start out with trying to set up a pot holder, and then we're going to process some wood. Then my, Nick is going to make some uh, shavings and uh, light the fire for making coffee. Sound good, Nick? Yep. All right, let's, let's get busy. All right, first thing I'm going to do is, uh, similar to one of our previous videos, I'm going to put a big piece of wood in a fork of a tree for our coffee setup. But it's going to be a little bit different this time. I'm going to show you. I'm going to use kind of a different carving technique for what's going to be hanging over the tree. So for right now, this looks like a decent piece of wood. It's already laying on the ground. I'm just going to chop a couple of pieces off the end so that I can get it in the fork of the tree. That... That will be part of our fire starter wood. Cut this off right here. Then we're going to use this. We're going to use this. I'm going to trim this thing up a little bit and carve it up and use it for the uh, the um, the pot holder. Is what we're going to do. It's mighty big pot holder. <laughs> well, it ain't going to be as big when I get done with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick this in that fork of the tree right there. About like that. And then that way, I'm going to carve this up where we got our pot hanger right here. Let's pull this up a little bit. There we go. I think that's going to work nicely right there. Now, I brought a silky saw, but what I want to do is I want to take the old knife and I'm just going to carve this until it breaks off. <laughs> So that we can see how well it carves. Let's cut this thing. Can you see me here? Yeah. A little too good. Usually I just sling it against a tree for it to break off. Yeah, but I'm wanting to see if I can just push this knife into this piece of hardwood. There we go. See that? Now the bark that's falling off, I'm going to cut some of the bark off. I mean, it does look better than smacking a tree with it to break it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, just, just a little bit, yeah. I say what I want, what, what, one cool thing is a lot of times whenever I'm, uh, whenever I'm, uh, making a setup. Let me just sit down here. Whenever I'm making a setup for coffee, a lot of times I'll uh, use paracord or string and I have to take it down. But the fact that this is uh, all natural materials, I can just leave it. Just put the fire out and walk away from it. It sure is wet. I hope everything else here ain't wet. That's actually kind of rotten right there. So we're going to see how that does. Now normally people would be like, oh, you should shorten this side, but that'll almost be kind of like, with that length, it'll be kind of like a, a counterbalance. <clears throat> now this knife had a very nice fine polish on it. When I get done scraping all this bark off, I'm going to see 
I want to see how it affects it. That could be an indication of how the uh, the hardness of the knife is in a, in a way. Of course, as fine of a polish as it was. You know, the wood you're carving on also affects it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm carving bark off. Yeah. We'll get all this off here in a minute. I mean, from here it still looks polished. Oh, yeah. They feel little marks on it. Yeah. All right. I think for now that's good enough. Let's put this up in here. I think what I'm gonna do, I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna cut it off again right here. Let's, let's, let's take a look at the pot. I'm going to talk more about this pot here in just a minute. Because this pot has some certain features that I want to talk about. That is a heavy duty pot. You could beat a bear to death with that pot right there. Hey, you want to try it? <laughs> no, I don't want to try it. <laughs> oh, we don't need to be running into any bears. Oh. Oh, did you bring bear spray? Because I didn't. No, I did not. All right, so let's take a peek here. We want to be somewhere in the neighborhood of right there. So we want to cut it off right here. So let's cut it off right here. Yeah, the core of that wood is still real, real. Huh. Oh, moment of truth. Oh, wow, Nate. Still looks good. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you can see that pretty good on camera. Let's flip it to the other side. Look at that edge. Not a nick on it. That's awesome. I'm a little dirty, but... That's yeah. awesome. I know it's not exciting carving bark off a stick. Yeah. But, you know, that's a that's a good indication of when you've got something that's that finely polished on how well the heat treat is and how well it'll hold an edge. Now, I know a good user knife will not do that. But, I mean, uh, a good, a good. It's a good indication of a good user knife is, is if it'll it'll retain that super micro polished edge after ripping the bark off of something. Yeah. Some hardwood. So, and what I think I'm gonna do? Let's take a look at this one more time. I want to put it about. I'm gonna carve a notch in it right there. I'm gonna carve a notch there. Let's just put it there. That'll work. There won't be no adjustment on this because of this thing up here unless you lift it up and put some more wood under it or something. With a normal pot hanger, you're going to have notches up at the top and the bottom, but we're just going to do go with a simple setup like this. All right? Yeah, I think it's fine. All right. This may be too rotten out here on the sand. No, that's pretty, that's pretty solid right in there. Yeah, that wood, that's got that brown color to it. I've carved through about half of the stick here, so what I need to do now is try to carve down inside it. and paper thin. Hmm. Let's see. And now I need to set this here. I can try to cut a notch down. 
Boy, that wood is hard, hard, hard. <clears throat> I'm afraid, I'm afraid my hand's gonna slip using that glove. This is kind of a messy operation here. It's much better with a saw, but you know, I'm just I'm just literally using a stick I picked up off the ground. Now, I don't necessarily have a big dip in the middle, but I've curved the sides. So let's see if that'll hold the pot. Put this up. Right, let's take another look at it. Still got a nice edge on it. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Looks good. I absolutely love that knife. That is beautiful. That is just hard. Yeah, I think that'll stay. I think it's kind of tugging on it a bit. It seems well, really having coffee in it. The weight of it. Honestly, I think I need to cut about an inch off and come up an inch. I think that's too close to the fire. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I can see right there where I need to cut on it just a little bit. Right there. Right. right. Then he accidentally broke it off and we had to do another four minutes of carving. Well, the whole thing was to showcase the knife. That might be a little bit boring. Put it back on there. All right. Now, honestly, Nick, we're not going to be... There ain't going to be no more movement than that on it, is it? Nah. I mean, it's, it, it ain't going to win no beauty contest, but it'll work. <laughs> All right, let's get some firewood together and then get ready to get this on the show on the road. All right, I'm ready for that fire. All right. I'm, gonna, I'm clearing out a nice area around it. I'm trying to make sure that there's no tree roots here if I can, because we don't want no tree roots to catch on fire. Kind of moving dirt around. All right, so we've got a nice clear area for our fire here and we ain't got nothing to worry about catching on fire. There's some more rotten wood. So now we just got to get us up a pile of wood and <coughs> make a fire. All right, All right, sound good, Nick? Sounds good. And then we're going to talk about this coffee pot and that other pot here in just a minute. All right, we got Nick over here on the silky saw, which he enjoys. Nick is used to a Baco Laplander. That was always his favorite saw. So I'm trying to get him used to a silky because it's pull only. So I see that was pretty fast, wasn't it, Nick? Yeah, that's pretty good. How do you like a silky compared to a Baco nail? Uh, it does a really good job on even even though you can't go back and forth constantly on it. It does a good job when you're just pulling. It. It's just that awkward. Big. Yeah, it's yeah. that it's that awkward nature of getting used to uh, pulling it, ain't it? Yeah. Because I know you're used to going just back and forth like a maniac. <laughs> but I mean, even though you're just pulling, it really does cut cut good, efficiently, doesn't it? Yeah, it's doing a good job. That's awesome. All right, the quicker you get that sawed up, the quicker we get a fire going. <laughs> oh, never mind, it was already done. <laughs> I was 
about to go crazy, go wild on it, but it's, it broke off already. All right. I got the wood all sawed up. Now Nick's going to do the processing today because I am going to make him earn his coffee. Yeah, he's taking a break today. Yeah. <laughs> I don't usually do the batoning, so bear with me on this. That's right. Oh, no! Does that usually happen? <laughs> no! Ah, it's still good. One Wait a minute here, use that piece. All right. Well, that's a pre-cut piece of wood, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. No, it has never happened, Nick. <laughs> All right, so now, let's see some feathers, Nick. Let's see your knife in action. I've kind of fooled around with mine. Uh, we're going to make car carve up a bunch of feathers. Now, I just want to say to all of you out there that uh, some people see beautiful feathers on YouTube. And some people uh, make horrible feathers in real life. And the problem is, is the knife has a lot to do with it. And the, uh, oh, that's nice, nice and curly. Uh the knife has a lot to do with it. The skill of the user has a lot to do with it. But the wood is just really, really important. Uh, not all wood's the same. The density is not the same. The grain is not the same. You know, so. Getting started is the hard part, too. Yeah, getting started. How is that wood anyway, Nick? Is it pretty hard? It would probably help avoid doing it on a knot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> roll it over this way and do it over on the edge. Here. See, now that's, that's pretty cool. Nick and I had pretty much given up. Hold on, don't cut my fingers off. Let me grab a handful of these. To me, Nick and I have given up on trying to keep the, the curls attached to the log. So we just make shavings. But if you can make them curl up like this, if you got a pile of these curly shavings, that is absolutely that is absolutely wonderful. I think I think that's what you need. So... I think me and Nick are both going to, because I want to see how my knife does uh, shavings, too. I'm getting good curls finally down here. See, look at that. It's either my knife or it's the wood, but look at the... Mine aren't curling up like yours are. That's weird. That is weird. See, we'll start the fire with yours and then throw mine on. That or we'll just have a mix of them. I'm right at a knot. Yeah, I'm winding up making the coarse ones. Look how coarse they are. Dang. These look terrible on camera. Yeah, look at the difference between mine and Nick's. Yeah. I well, I've we'll... got this knot right here. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm just gonna flip, flip it around. around. All right. Oh, wait, there's an out there. All right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get me another piece of here, wood. That's, that's better right there, probably. There we go. Mm. And those are some nice curls, Nick. All right, now I'm gonna talk about these two pots before we get them on the fire. Nick, show them your knife real quick—a close-up, because I don't know if they saw a close-up of the oh, yeah. the handle of it. You can see that even after all that, it still looks in great condition. It's the handle. Yeah, it's got a good feel to it when you're using it too. I tell you, seventy three Forge has got their. They've got their uh, heat treat down pat. Oh, 73 Forge has got a YouTube channel. They are, they're also on Instagram and I think Facebook. Anyway, all right, so moving along, let's take a peek here. Uh, this coffee pot, let's take a look here a minute. Now, what this is, my older one, I have discovered when you make, <clears throat> a lot of people argue and go, that's cowboy coffee. Well, the thing is, is I don't see any cows and Nick and I aren't wearing cowboy boots, so this is deemed 
bush coffee because we're bushcrafters. So <laughs> they call it cowboy coffee, hobo coffee, or bush coffee. So us bushcrafters have to call it bush coffee. So the thing is, is there's no filter. You just throw in the the uh, throw in the um, grounds. grounds and basically boil it. So I have learned that if you have a big wide pot, there is much more of a surface for the grounds to lay on and the water is not quite as deep which is bad for your dipper because what you're going to be doing is you're going to be dipping the coffee out so a tall skinny pot is much much better all right so, so this is the old pot that i used to use it's tall and skinny you can clearly see and what this is is it's a uh i can't believe that dog showed up again this is the dog that was in the last video who owns that dog? Oh, where were we? I got this way. His talk shows up. I can't believe it. This dog must. Hey, wait a minute. Get away from that machete. <laughs> Don't lick me. <laughs> Don't get in our <laughs> shavings. Okay, so this is. Nick, if I didn't think this dog belonged to somebody, we'd carry it home. I think the dog wants some coffee too. All right, now here, don't here back up now. I don't know who you are. Get away from me. Let me look at its collar. Oh, that's a flea collar. That's a flea collar, Nick. No. But there's no name on it. Uh, get off our shavings. He's looking in our shavings. This is gonna be great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get out of here, dog. Lay down and be good. Well, we this has been a great video, name. guys. We're gonna end it right here. This dog's name's Payne. Okay. All right. Nick, I'm going to have to lure this dog off. We can't film this scene without it. Okay? Y'all hold on, folks. Come here. Get up, dog. Come over here. Oh, we, got the we got our shavings everywhere from our unexpected visitor, which I just... I see, Nick, now all your curls are all mixed in with my coarse shavings. Yeah, he had, uh, you know, I had all the nice, small, highly flammable curls, you know, in a nice little pile. Now they're kind of well, everywhere. Due to our unexpected visitor, which I'm shocked, <clears throat> there's got to be a house over that hill right there. There has got to be, because that's the same dog that showed up in the last video. But anyway, and then he's, he's run off now. I don't even see him anywhere, but... But anyway, uh, you got cut Nick some slack if it takes him several stri strikes because all of his fine stuff's mixed in with the coarse stuff now. So anyway, okay, well, let's talk about, let's go back to talking about this that we started on. If you've got a nice thin, if you have a wide pot with a narrow amount of water, you can't hardly get your dipper in there. But if you have these grounds piled up on the bottom, you have a large narrow area for getting your dipper in and getting the coffee out, okay? Now this was an asparagus pot. I like a real thick stainless steel pot. They're really handy. And when I when I got this, I also had, you can either put a top on it, and then I made this weird looking hanger, and it's kind of awkward to get in there, but it goes over the factory handles. And uh, you have to kind of catch all four sides, like that. But the beauty of that thing is, is once you hang it over the fire, you can drop it down and pull it out, and it won't get hot. And the other thing you can do is if you have to, you can put water in the bottom and food in the top and make it a steamer. And I just happened to find one that fits in tight enough that it'll pick the top out. So in reality, you could steam food in the top and boil water in the bottom for whatever, rice, oatmeal, grits. But anyway, that was the older one. And I came across this one at Goodwill, and I don't know what it is. I have no idea. Uh, let me put all this stuff back in. This one... This new one is uh, much, much, much thicker, and you could beat a bear to death with this thing. This thing here, I, I think it went to an Instapot, but I mean, that thing, that is some tough stainless there. And normally, whenever I weld ears onto these things, they burn through to the other side, but this is so thick that it didn't. So what I did is I welded ears on it. It was just a plain pot, and then I made this bale like this to where all I got to do is reach in and grab it, and pick up on it, which is, it's a lot, one piece bale is a lot less awkward than the other one. And so what you can do with that is pick it up like that. And now the lid, I took off the plastic top and put this on it so that I can use it like that. And so you can even take this and if you've got it on the fire, you can drag it around, you know, but we're going to hang it over the fire. 
And the fact is, is this fact that I welded this ring on right here, is if you have to, is you can take a stick or a knife and you can take the lid off to check your progress. You can't do that with the factory little black uh, knob that's on top. Okay, so now to the nitty gritty. We are gonna make some coffee. All right. I'm gonna set this thing up first. So we have brought two kinds. We ain't got no cream or sugar, so we're just gonna have a flavored type coffee. We have, this is Cost Plus World Market. They were going out of business and we bought some Texas Turtle because it was 40% off. Evidently Whole Foods has wiped them off the face of the earth. <laughs> so anyway, a Bed Bath & Beyond owns Cost Plus World Market. And this is a small batch roasted company called New Orleans Roast. And uh, it's, uh, it's roasted in New Orleans near the French Quarter, but it's dis distributed by Covington, Louisiana. But it's Southern Pecan. So, mm -hmm. you want to try this one? Sure. I've been kind of dying to try this one because, you know, I've, I've, I opened it up and smelled it. Oh, it smells good. Here, never look that over to the smell. Oh, yeah, it's got a great smell to it. Oh, yeah. It yeah, make that one. <laughs> now we have, all right, we'll make this one. Now, the thing is, is when you come up, when you come up with your bush pot, and we have a giant ferro rod for just in case, and I put this protective thing on there to keep from the striker from cutting my bag. That's a Nathan's 4071 rod, but Jerry's Wood Shop and Outdoors put the handles on it. Uh, let's see, we have in here, I got another striker. Okay, now here's the thing. Once you have a bush pot that becomes your favorite, that will last you a lifetime, you figure out the amount of coffee per water. And then once you learn what works, stick with it. So what I have discovered is for this little brown scoop, when I pour water into this cup here, up to here, one cup, one scoop. Okay, put it in. Now, what you do <clears throat> is if you put in like four scoops of, of, of water, I put in five scoops of coffee. So hmm. always put in one extra scoop of coffee because once this comes to a boil, you're going to pour in a whole cup of cold water from a height and it's going to shock the grounds instantly and draw the grounds to the bottom. I know a lot of you may have seen that in a previous video, but that's what we're going to do. Okay, so yeah. I'm going to set this up and hang it over the fire where everything is cold. And then we're going to... Yeah, make sure there's no fire. shavings on it. Yeah, no shavings, no wood shavings, no stray dogs. Okay. okay. All right, so... <laughs> Let me get the water over here. I think I got water in the pack. Yeah, here we go. All right, so what I'm going to do... I'm going to measure out... How many cups do we want? Uh, six cups total? Yeah, maybe. Six. Yeah. Let's go with six cups. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour six cups in here. And I'll leave a little bit at the height right there. All right, one. Pour in six cups of water. Okay, we've got six cups of water in here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put seven scoops of coffee. Right? Okay. Heaping. Whew. One. That's a lot of coffee. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Now you don't want to stir it. Okay, you do not want to stir it. What you want to do is you just want it sitting on top, just like that. And when, it, when, when the water starts boiling, then you're gonna let it boil for about a minute, maybe two minutes. So we are ready to go now, and we're gonna put the lid on there cause, so that we can speed up the boiling time. And then Nick, there you go. Nick is going to attempt to start a fire with our shavings after that dog has, has has decimated. Look at that! I got that's a piece of junk right there. That's got coffee all over the sticker. <laughs> you New Orleans people, you need to put a clip on here. <laughs> and I don't even have a clip. 
Then all our viewers in New Orleans just quit watching us. Uh, well, I mean, it's good coffee. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm not real happy with the bag. But then again, it smells maybe, good. Maybe if I was a little bit. Okay, there you go. That's better. I apologize. That's Set yeah, my apologies. <laughs> all right, we're good to go. Nick, you ready to start a fire? Hey, all right. do you want to use the big ferro rod now that the dog's done screwed all her shavings up? Uh, nah, I'm going to keep trying with a little one. All right, you can try it with a little one. It's easy with the big ferro rod because that's like one or two strikes. All right. Sounds as long as it's not windy and your shavings aren't thrown everywhere. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mine's a little smaller with a different striker, so it's. Uh, All right. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right. And the dipper, real quick, the way the dipper's made, is you keep it clean and handy up top. That, cold. that way yep. you ain't got to hunt for it, you ain't got to lay it on the ground. That's why I like that, that curved handle of it right there. And that curved handle at an angle so you can dip down in. You don't ever want to pour the coffee out because it messes up the grounds that are settled on the bottom. Yeah. All right? All right, Nick, it's ferro rod time. All right, finally. All right. Well, pour one out everywhere. All right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Everything's so... Good spot. Yeah, everything's so moist today. Oops, <clears throat> and we've got thick and thin curls in there. Oh. Oh, it's smoldering. Oh, there you go. You got a flame, Nick. All right, start putting more on top of it. I'm gonna break okay. up some of these branches so that we can put it on it. All right. That's awesome. Fantastic. All right, pile some more on there. Pile some of that thick stuff that I yeah, that I did. Some... I'm gonna put some really thick over here. All right. Yeah. All right. Let me put. Hold on. Let me put this up. Sure do wish I have a Nomex gloves. Ah, uh, it's fine. Join me in my freezing hands. Yeah, it's gonna feel good in a minute. Yeah, finally. Alright, let's hang this. Been out here for like, <laughs> huh? like an hour doing this. Huh? Been out here for like an hour doing this. So now that I've got that hanging, what I'm gonna do, let's see, let's get this fire over just a little bit. Works right under it. There you go, start breaking up small sticks there. I'm putting it in the bar. Huh? Grab another handful of these to throw them on. We're just going to keep piling on the fine fuel until we get it going. Well, kindling, tender. We had the tender and then we had the kindling. And say with bush coffee, you know, everybody's always talking all the time saying that, oh, you got to cook over coals. Well, the thing is, is whenever you're making this bush coffee, big flames that are preheating the entire vessel are, 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 Fantastic. I mean, that's what you really want. I see now something's going on here. I think the wind's blowing this. The flames aren't. I don't know. It's not wind. No, I don't it's feel the wind, anywhere. but the, the flames are going in the. Tree tops aren't moving at all. The flames are going in the opposite direction. Things, I don't know. Maybe just keep pulling things on that side. That's weird. I'm gonna put a handful over on this side because I want more flames on this side. All right, Nick and I are going to continue to work on this fire until we get it to where it'll sustain itself. And then I got a couple of machetes I want to talk about. 
unless Nick wants to talk about them. Oh, good <laughs> shady man. All right. I'll let you talk about those. All right. Sounds good to me. Hey, look at this. I just realized something, Nick. That dog got these leaves everywhere. He even kicked the leaves around all over the place. Dumb dog. <laughs> all right, we're going to get the fire sustainable, and then we're going to talk about some stuff. Look, I'm going to zoom in on that. If I can. I may have to zoom out. I want you to see what you're dealing with sometimes. I can't see it. Oh, right here? Oh, there it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. Whenever there's moisture in the wood, that's what you're dealing with sometimes. Look at that. It's just, that's a good example of it just pouring out. What was that, Nick? Spider alarm. That ain't good. All right, I think that fire's plenty sustained now. Looks like Look the only one doing it. Yeah, isn't that weird though? Give it a couple good wax. I'm gonna edit that part out. Right All right, let's take a look in here a minute. See the steam coming off of it, and the coffee is starting to drip down into it. But it's not starting to boil yet. All right, now, while we got the fire going, I'm going to talk about this anorak. Because every time I wear an anorak in a video, people ask about it. I bet I've been asked about these anoraks a thousand times. <laughs> now, I've got an olive drab one, I've got the multi cam one, and i got a desert camo one. The olive drab one came from Sportsman's Guide, and then this one and the desert camo one came off of uh, Amazon.com, but there's a guy on eBay that sells them too. And the, when you when you look for something like this, it's, it's uh, called... Uh, military hooded pullover anorak okay and the reason i love these things is since they don't have any buttons or zippers air can't sneak in through the front and then of course you've got the hood on the back that you can pull over your head for if you get if you get uh cold you, you know cover up your hat or if it's snowing or raining and then on the front it's got this cool pouch that zips up where you can keep like your cell phone or gps or your compass and everything right here handy in the front and then it's got a pocket that goes completely through. <laughs> so you can put big stuff in it while you're in camp, or if you want to, if your hands get cold, you can put them in that pocket and just clasp your hands together just like that. So that's mm -hmm. about the anorak right there, right? So let's check on the coffee. I just thought, about, you just brought up a good point. People may ask about your jacket because that is not an M65. Because see how the pockets have like a teardrop to them? Yeah. They're huge pockets, too. Yeah. This is an M43 field jacket remake from uh, at the front. Um, it's a really nice jacket. Warm. So. See, from what I hear, it's almost impossible to find an M43. So a company started remaking them. Yeah, you so. know, Goodwills and other thrift stores. We see M65s all the time. Oh, yeah. You never I've see them. I've only read on about them. one time where somebody found an actual M43 on thrift store so right i just gave up about this very very rare it's great you know if you want to carry a lot of stuff yeah Huge yeah pocket, so. that's awesome all right let's go look at the right. are we boiling yet we are boiling all right all right so we were already boiling so let's just count i should have checked it earlier let's count 30 seconds and then call it done it might be some uh pretty strong coffee yeah it may be <laughs> oh well Count to 30 and I'm going to get the water ready to put in it. Okay. About time. Yeah. Pour us in some water. Let's 
See, that's just perfect. A two liter bottle will, bottle will make seven cups of coffee. Right. Now, in this other bag, I have a cup and a piece of leather. Man, you gotta hurry. That's gonna be some strong coffee. Cup. Yeah, I, yeah, I gotta hurry. Right. So, Did you say you're only supposed to let it boil for like a minute? Yeah, a minute. It's been maybe two or three minutes. Alright, let's take it off the fire and set it over here. Look how hot this is. Hey, that ain't even hot. Yeah. Alright, so let's yeah. pull this off. Ooh, look at it. Alright, can you see inside there, Nick? Perfectly. Now, I wonder if I can hang that over the fire. Sorry, it'd be a nice, clean place. Okay, now, I'm going to hold this up. And here we go. Should you back up? Can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. I'm going to zoom in on the pot when you start pouring it. Right in the center. Just a steady stream. And what that's doing is that's shocking that super hot coffee. Right. And as Mr. Kohansky says, the coffee is now ready to consume. <laughs> All right. You gonna crank the camera down or? Uh. Oh, oh, hold on. Let me, let me just. Can you see it? Can you see me putting the dipper in? Yeah, I can see it. All right. Here, I'll go down a little bit. However much it lets me. Right. Tell me where I'm in. Main hey, shot. Can you see the cup? Yeah. No grind. Oh, my boot caught it. Oh no! See? Oh, there's a little bit of grounds in there. A little bit of dust. But it'll settle. That dust will, that dust will settle. Now I'm only going to pour a half a cup so it'll cool off pretty quick and we can drink it. Okay. All right. And then this cup here is insulated so I'm only going to pour a half a cup into it. the lid back on it so it'll stay hot. Now you don't want to put it back over the fire unless you got an adjustable pot and you can set it up high. But you can put it close to the fire to keep it from getting too cold. Alright? Mm -hmm. right. thing that uh, I want to talk about here because a friend of mine was talking about, uh, a friend of mine on Bushcraft USA, it's a forum I'm a member of, and uh, for those of you that would like to be around a bunch of like-minded bushcrafters and learn, and even a bunch of experienced guys you can ask questions, go join Bushcraft USA, it's a great forum. So, anyway, a friend of mine asked me, without getting into a huge discussion over use, price, budget, size, weight. Let's just say that I, I, I told him about the K-Bar Cutlass. Okay. Now this is the K-Bar Cutlass. This looks very similar to the Ontario SP-53. Now I think I mentioned about two videos back that I think that Ontario quit making these because everybody was saying, I can't get them. I cannot get one. Well, somebody actually called Ontario and they said they were releasing a batch in February. And the reason that they slowed down production was because they wasn't selling good. So anyway, they're going to be available in February. But uh, anyway, uh, I think the K-Bar Cutlass is a little cheaper than this, but it's not as thick. See, it's very, very, very similar. Very similar, but just a lot thicker. So, you know, if you're the kind of guy that you don't want a real super heavy blade, this may suit you a little bit better. But I just wanted to... I wanted to show the difference in the two. SP-53, Cutlass, K-Bar and Ontario, two good companies. So, anyway. All right, we about ready to try the coffee? Oh yeah. All right, I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna wait for this all morning. Absolutely. All right, what do you think, Nick? Strong, but good. Yeah. I like it. 
Very strong. It's probably bold for about three minutes. That is good. That's very good coffee. Where is that? Yeah, New Orleans Roast Southern Pecan. That's pretty good stuff right there. Cheers. Cheers. What was that? I don't want to know. <laughs> we don't want to know. We didn't know. hear that. <laughs> All right, we hope you had fun. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We love our new knives. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Knives and coffee. You can't go wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. You hear that squeaking? Yeah, there's a tree over there. That's not good. Look it's at that. About to fall. I put that back on the fire and it's popping. Let's take it back off. Yeah, you want to you pull it even more. We don't want to scorch your coffee. <laughs> All right, we hope you had fun. Uh, I don't know what video will be next. I have no idea because I got a tag coming up. But we had a blast with this and, you know, covered a few things that had been asked in the past and a few things that I just wanted to show. <laughs> so, anything you want to add, Nick? Um, no, just uh, definitely watch the coffee. Oh, yeah, watch the coffee. Yeah, it should, it should boil for just a minute. And I think the good thing is, is this is not bitter. It's just strong. Strong. And there's, I can tell there's a difference between bitter and strong. So, you know how it is. So, yeah. all right. Watch out for uh, Bigfoot. Watch out for uh, stray dogs. <laughs> yep, watch your shaving piles. A dog may come and just lay right on it. <laughs> Stand up and, and like all your super fine shavings out of the way. <laughs> Keep your shavings in a pile and your ferro rods sparking. <laughs> we, we shall see you in the next one. See you later. <laughs>